Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiffany. How are you? We do anything related to fiber arts on this channel and today is no different. We are doing, if you guys notice, we are in my yarn corner. I know it's been so long since I've sat here. It feels really nostalgic and I feel kind of ready to be back. I know a lot of people have missed yarn corners, so I thought it'd be nice to kind of mix it up between like yarn corners and then vlogs, you know, kind of having like a nice summary of all the pieces, you know, I've been working on, things that I've finished, things that I'm planning on doing all uh, in one video. So if you just wanna watch these, you can, and you can be up to date. I guess I was just worried about being a little bit repetitive, but I feel like not everyone watches every single thing on my platforms. Best be thorough. I'm either gonna do these again, kind of every month or maybe every season. I haven't really thought about it yet. Let's get ready to talk for a really long time. I hope you guys are buckled in, ready to go. Get yourself a nice drink of water. I hope you have something to knit on because this is going to be a long one. I have to recap everything we've missed, mostly just because I want to and uh, kind of have it more complete. So things that I finished. We, for this 2024, I don't know how it's gone by so quickly. It has literally flown by like I don't even know how it's April like mid-April too so we've just been doing a lot of things that I kind of set out to do for the year I wanted to you know have less whips going at one time I wanted to use more of my stash and I wanted to start making my own pattern so that's kind of what the energy is and I feel like we've been doing really well so we finished a lot of sweaters I don't know what happened kind of during the January time I was like I was in a sweater kind of moment but we'll just pop these off really quickly just because I would love to show them off oh shoot sorry yeah so today I'm wearing this is going to be the typical Tuesday top I'm doing a summer series or summer days collection where I'm going to be making um, a top for every day of the week so this one is Tuesday so again, we just love the neckline. What more can I say about it? She's gorgeous. I love the look of it with the stockinette, like the V-neck decreases with just the stockinette. It's really nice. I love the thick kind of border I did around the decreases, or sorry, increases. And again, just another stockinette border. I've been in love. I've been in love. You're gonna see it. You're gonna see how in love I've been. <laughs> and I hope you enjoy it because I've been loving it and that's all I've really been wanting to knit. Regardless, before, I was making lots of sweaters. The sweaters were kind of everything I wanted to be making. I just wanted to get a sweater pattern because initially before I only really had the boyfriend slipover, typical slipover, and the typical tank. And I guess the mohair slipover, and I guess I was coming out with the typical vest. So <laughs> we were coming out with things, but none of them were sweaters. So I kind of madly, went into like a sweater frenzy. Um, I don't know if these are in any order specifically, but this is just the typical sweater. I am obsessed. I love cobalt. Cobalt is my color. If you guys know, it's everything and more. I love, again, I'm so into a really thick border kind of right here. I don't know. I just don't like it really thin. Anything thin is like, weirds me out. Love, again, really super thick bulky guy but it's super lightweight really good for the summer I thought I like patted myself on the back because these sleeves were gorgeous yeah we've just been like making patterns recently and it's and it's been really fun and I'm like so inspired like all the time like I almost don't I almost like can't knit like I wish I could knit more right so this is just her I was in like my colorful era at this point. We just finished the really green sweater that I've been making and I just wanted a really basic one. I wanted a colorful one. I was really inspired by again, Brittany Bathgate, so we had to make it. Um, this guy is knit with Double Sunday in the color electric blue and overall really nice. I used, I think five millimeter for just a DK weight and it's, Honestly, really nice. I, I'm also really into making pieces with bigger needles. I don't know, I've just been really loving anything bigger than four millimeter. I mean, some some tops I've been making have been like three and a half. I probably have talked about these in the previous yarn corner, so I'm sorry if it's repeated. I think it's just nice for completeness because I have finished them and they're beautiful and I wanna show off, I wanna show off my, my own patterns. So this is the cross mock neck. I, again, this was inspired by Brittany Bathgate too. What were we thinking? I don't know, but we couldn't help ourselves. This is just the neckline. Again, thick, chunky border around the increases here. It just looks really nice, very weirdly like traditional. I don't know if it's like a very specific type of um, like neckline, but it, it's very, like if you're wearing a kimono, you know, when you fold it over, it, it kind of gives off that energy. 
um, but in a sweater form. So yeah, I knitted this, <laughs> weirdly enough, it is two by two on all of the borders except the top. So the top part is one by one ribbing. Um, this guy I'm hoping to get tested soon. So if you wanted, you could just do one by one. I just did it because it was based off of the photo of Brittany Bathgate's sweater. I have no regrets doing it mismatched. I honestly think it looks really nice. Beautiful, this one just looks really nice in like the winter fall time, I feel. Um, I used one strand of Knitting for Olive Merino in Nordic Beach, and then one strand, I think I used Tin Silk Mohair by Sun Garn in their gray color, so. Lovely on really thick needles. I think I used six, so it went by really quickly and I need more of them because I really like, I really like the thick stitch definition. Sometimes you don't want a small one, but I have been itching because it's like the spring summer time to do kind of like lighter versions of sweaters. I've been really itching to make a like a maroon or burgundy sweater that is kind of red. We'll see, we'll see. I feel bad because I just knit this red sweater. So, this is, oh my gosh, I have so many sweaters. Oh my gosh, this is so funny. So this is the Scarlet sweater. I knit this guy kind of right after the Cobalt one because again, we were in our color era. I really wanted a red sweater because it was kind of really in. Is it still in? It better be because I'm gonna wear the bejesus out of this. So just looks like this. The design is, um, the ribbing is two by two two by two, two by two. I wasn't a two by two girly, but then I don't know. I was just looking, I guess maybe on Pinterest or just looking around and I just saw a bunch of two by two ribbing and it just, I ate it up and I couldn't resist. So love this, love the neckline. It's just really classy. I sewed in this, um, I sewed in this tag and look at how cute it is. I made it look really like handmade, but I feel like I really like the edges and how it it came out. So we have this, um, again, pretty basic stockinette, but she is different. It has a really interesting, I guess like shoulder design, which also comes out in the front section. So it, I kind of just wanted to do this because I didn't want to do something that was just going to be all stockinette again. Don't get me wrong, I love stockinette, but sometimes you want to do something a little bit different, but have it feel just as simple as a stockinette, just like with a little bit of pizzazz. And this gave, it gave what it needed to give, you know, like to, I didn't want to knit another typical sweater. I don't know, I just wanted to try different styles of stockinette, if that makes sense. Yeah, so this guy is completely different. I'm hoping to also get this guy tested soon. We'll see, we'll see. I've just kind of gotten into the flow of testing and it's actually quite, it's quite tedious when you come out with a lot of patterns. I knitted this in three strands, one strand, Schackenmeyer, the red that I got in Germany, and then I used uh, one strand of a Color Mart yarn that I got from their mystery pack, which is crazy because I had enough for this whole sweater and I still have leftover, which I'm like, what am I even gonna do with? And then one strand of this cotton yarn that I got that was specifically for weaving. So it made the sweater a little bit more, I don't know, maybe a little bit more rougher, but it is a like cotton merino blend, which I wanted to try out. I don't know, I don't see a lot of sweaters being made with a cotton merino blend or just cotton, so maybe I will have to do that, but it is not as warm, which I kind of wanted. I feel like this would be really good just uh, like as a light layer. This is also, these two are very nice light layers, but then the mohair guy, She's a heavy warm one. Okay, so then after kind of finishing a bunch of tops, I don't know if you guys saw in my previous videos, I had talked about the typical mohair cardigan and I was working on like this saddle shoulder, yellow, beautiful um, sweater. And I don't know why, but I had just been putting it off for so long, not really having the motivation to work on it just cause I, I don't know, I think in my mind I was like, this is gonna take too long, you don't have time, you gotta work on other things. Um, but it literally took me two seconds. I recently just finished, this is the, oops, gotta put this button back on. This is the typical mohair cardigan. I knitted this with one strand of my classic sock in Golden Ticket, and then two, I think I did three strands yellow mohair, but you could really get away with just two. 
Um, but yeah, this is just what it looks like. Super dainty, had to do a good saddle shoulder. This is my first saddle shoulder I've ever made for, as a pattern, so I haven't written it up yet because we're scared, but really liked the dainty collar. We did just like a really basic eye cord, which was really nice, and again, you guys know, we're here for the two by two ribbing. I feel like two by two ribbing looks really nice with this like super mohair piece. I have a bunch of leftovers, so I'm probably gonna be making, I have a picture of this girl that I follow. Her name is Brooklyn and I love everything she wears. And um, she just wore this really nice mohair yellow tank. That's really, it's like really you neck. Um, but I think it would complement this guy so well because it is again, two by two ribbing. If we have time, I would love to work on that, but I'm a little lazy <laughs> at the moment. Like it's not calling for me. And I find that pieces just have to come, like they like, it comes to me and then I start it. And like once the momentum and like the flow happens, then I can keep it going. But for some reason, I'm, I'm just not feeling the need to pick it up. So we're not gonna do it. We finally finished that. After kind of like making all the sweaters and just like feeling really good about just my designs, I was thinking I should really revamp a lot of my previous patterns. You know, I want to make bigger sizes for a couple of them, reformat them in the new format that I have been writing in, and um, just kind of revisit a lot of old pieces. So if you guys remember, this is my typical dress. <laughs> I've been knitting this for like two years. I just... It has been in the shame corner for so long. I just, when I initially finished it, I was like really happy with it. And I was like, yeah, this is, I'm gonna make a pattern. And then I guess I just got kind of nervous about the testing and like the grading and the writing of the pattern. So I just put it off for so long. Recently, because I've been making a bunch of tops, I have rediscovered my love for um, edges. And I realized that I actually didn't really like the typical dress that I had made. And I think that was probably what was keeping me from kind of publishing it because I wanted it to be something I was gonna wear. And I think I knew I wasn't really gonna wear it. So recently I undid all of the edges and I redid them in just your basic, a stockinette folded brim edge. And this is how it came out. I love how it looks. It's super flattering. And I feel like it makes this, I feel like it makes the outlines look really maybe store-bought. Um, and so the back is also the same hole. When I write the pattern out, I think what I'll do, I want to make thick edges here. So for this pattern, I had made it right to the edge, so it's like seamless. But I think I'll add it here and I'll add it for the arms and I'll add it for the edges here just because... I maybe don't love the way the sample is now based off of like how my knitting style is, but nonetheless, I still love this. I would have it no other way. I think the way it came out this final time is my final and perfect one, and I am very satisfied with it. So I'm hoping to write it out and get it out for you guys because I know so many of you guys have been you know, asking me about this. I even put out a tester call. Uh, I probably will be sending out a new one just because there's no way those people are still interested. Um, but yeah, really excited to see what people come up with this one. Um, I have two extra skeins, so I kind of have been thinking about making it uh, floor length versus like a midi, and then I can make kind of two slits in the front and the back, so it looks, I don't know, it looks nicer. So um, we'll include that in the pattern. We'll see how it goes. I just think I would look really good in this guy. And you guys should also look really good in this one because it's so beautiful. It's my first dress pattern. I would love to make more, but I think this beast was something I needed to conquer first. And the green is just a really beautiful color. I knitted this in the WAC Pima Cotton. Um, it's just a DK weight and it's just beautiful. Absolutely stunning. Okay, so from that one, <laughs> I decided I wanted to pick up the typical tank up again. I... I don't know what it is about tops and ribbing, but I've just haven't been in love with them, at least for my pieces. So I thought to just redo them and just see if I like it. If I don't, then I just redo it in the ribbing. I just undid, I think, one of them. I think I undid the collar and then I undid the arms and then we did it and then we fell in love. I haven't um, weaved in the ends, but 
This is her. I still have to wash it though. It's a little crumply. I'm, I don't know, maybe I'm holding it a bit tight, but this is just what the new and improved typical tank looks like. I really love how this came out. I think it looks better. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna like chew my own horn. Then the cami number nine uh, by my favorite things knitwear i find i don't i didn't like the way that it's written so you pick up stitches not like from the front but from the back and then you fold over and then you cast off and then you have to like sew it in i don't like that so i think what i'm gonna do with my cami number nine is just redo it maybe and do it the way i did it i actually used a crochet hook and then you kind of do kind of slip stitches along um, the edge to create that chain look and I love this guy and I hope to wear this more It just has like the perfect cami outline and I think the stockinette really Kind of gives it that look versus the ribbing. Thankfully I had enough yarn uh, and had leftover of the bamboo, but I used the whack bamboo yarn um, Funny how I used so much whack back in the day. Very good. Very lovely. Yeah, hopefully I can weave in the ends and um, kind of republish the pattern. Everyone who paid for the pattern previously will get the new updated version. Happy to work on that kind of slowly because I am going away. So I don't know how the videos are gonna be done next month, but I am hoping to still upload. Um, there won't be any streams for almost all of the month of May. I'm so sorry to my lovely um, people who watch the streams because we are going to Scandinavia. I'll be going to Denmark and Norway. Uh, we are also going to Erha, so I will be stalking down Petit Nin. Hopefully I can find her for you guys because wouldn't that be such a complete circle moment. I was um, trying not to buy any yarn until this moment, so it's kind of funny that like now we're at that stage where now I can buy yarn because my yarn band kind of is over, but I'm still wanting to finish up the stash. There's, I just, I just want to get some, maybe some Danish and like Norwegian yarn that I can't get here because it's so flippin' difficult to buy. So we're probably just gonna do that. And um, yeah, I hope to get a bunch of content out for you guys. Okay, so now onto tops. I guess releasing a collection kind of slowly throughout the summer called the Summer Days Collection, where I'm gonna make a top for every day of the week. I don't know about Sunday and Saturday, just because Petit Knit kind of has a monopoly over the Sunday top. I don't know. Maybe we'll do a Saturday one. I haven't decided, but so yeah. So this guy is knit with the Kensington Prairie Farm cotton alpaca and I had some left over because I bought so many and I'm planning to make a skirt to go with this. I am probably either going to be a mini or a midi but we'll see. It's It kind of gives slipover but it's giving a slipover that you can wear just by itself and I really like a cute set. So yeah I'm hoping to wear this in the springtime because it's so, I don't know, it's just like a really nice it's like a basic that I never really thought I needed and I think I could rock this really well with like some jorts. <laughs> jorts or like maybe a skirt. You can like match this with anything. I think the cream color. I I need more cream. But I I said that like I, I thought I had too much cream when I was first knitting and now I need more. So it just, I don't know. With my skin tone, I think it looks beautiful. Okay, thank you. Next top. Damn, we, dude, I finished so many things since at uh, the beginning of January, that's crazy um, how time flies. Uh, but this is the Thursday top, typical Thursday top. So this guy is like my pride and joy. It is actually my favorite piece I think I've ever made in my entire life. It is just something I feel like could be store-bought and that freaks me out. It like is my most perfect piece I've ever made. I didn't think it was going to be so gorgeous and then it became so gorgeous and I love her. I just sent out testing forms so I'm hoping to choose that up, finish up the grading and get it sent out to you guys so we can get it out because it's like my most favorite piece ever. I did an I-cord edge for all of the edging and then the bottom is a stockinette folded brim but then it goes so well with the edging of the I-cord. Oh, so freaking good. So I made a kind of medium size that's quite 
kind of has a lot of negative ease. I'm hoping to knit maybe like a 2XL um, and see, because I really would like to get an oversized fit one just because how could I not have more of these? I'm thinking like a brown, like a brown, like a gorgeous like taupey brown and I know I could find it in my stash easy. So we're thinking about it and I think it's gonna be so good. Maybe I could do one in a cashmere. I have some brown cashmere. Oh my god, Tiffany, don't. I'm gonna like fall in love um, and cry. So that is her. Just like the per the buttons match perfectly with this guy. It fits me like a glove and it is probably the most iconic piece, the typical Thursday top. She's making a statement but being really subtle about it. Okay, yeah, so this I knit with one strand of uh, Rosa Palmar Mondem in their navy color. I used about 150 grams. It's on four millimeters, so it looks quite thin. Lol, you can see the holes, but I swear to God, it does not look that holy in against your skin. But it's so dainty, and I feel like I want to knit more just fingering weights on four millimeter just to give that really nice light look. Okay, next guy is the Friday top. I just really wanted something that had really kind of like a square neckline, really thin border straps, all that jazz, and that's what we got. We got a really basic cami. I just think it's really flattering on the body and like the silhouette just is really basic and I wanted a really nice black top. This guy I knit, I love, you can't even see. I knit this in Essayer Trio One and Essayer Her Organic and it's quite a nice blend. It has that linen feeling to it, but I actually really like that feeling. I need to get more hopefully in Denmark because it's just really nice and I really like how it came out. I do have the linen color. I might try to get a white or brown because um, Petite Knit did come out with her cloud top. I don't love the silhouette of that one, but I do like the color, so we'll see how that goes. But this is just the top. It's really basic and all of these pieces are really easy. I think I didn't realize how easy it is to make tops. It just like flies by, especially when you're doing them on four millimeter. I don't know, I've just been so scarred recently doing, or I guess so scarred in the last couple of years of having to do like three millimeter um, pieces. So it has been a joy. The third one I just finished. Um, none of these, some of them I still need to block. It's so sad. Okay, so this is the typical Monday top. I don't know, I just thought this top was so, it was so Monday. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? You know, if you know, if you know, you know, if you know, you know. Um, I don't know. I just thought it was a basic kind of tank top that you could wear on your like basic Monday. You know, you grab a cup of coffee, you're going to work. I don't know. Can you wear this to work? I doubt it. Maybe on a summer day when you're not wanting to think about anything because it's a Monday, you know? You just want to kind of get through the week and this is your working tea. This is what's going to get you through. So we're starting off very strong. So this is the Monday um, top. I... There's a line kind of going on right here because I had blocked the section upwards because I wanted to make sure the silhouette looked good enough that I could keep going and not feel um, like I was wasting my time because I had to frog it or something. But um, yeah, again, we just did a bunch of stockinette borders. Really thin, really nice, really good, like um, really good neckline. Again, flat, I really, I love a good square. Um, and I feel like the June top was just a little bit too round and I've already made it. <laughs> and um, I made it in this beautiful khaki gory, so I just wanted a nice basic. Um, you, I really liked, I wanted to do kind of having a higher back and a lower front, just so the front kind of went kind of lower. Not to show off the chesticles or anything, but kind of just have a nice, look without your back being too low because I don't know I'm not someone who really likes showing off my back um but yeah nice silhouette I don't know how I feel about this I didn't want to do the <laughs> I didn't want to do the pearl bind off so you have like you do a pearl row and then you cast off and then sew in the back I just wanted to flip it over like a normal edging we'll see I have to wash it first um and see if it stays flat because then I'll just keep it like that and I won't have to add anything extra to it. I knitted this in Holst Coast and Putty held it two strands on, I think I knitted this in three and a half. No, 
I'm gonna have to check my book. It's either three and a half or four. Um, I was really scared about the blocking. I wasn't sure if it was gonna bloom. That's why I had um, blocked it partially to just see how it looked like, but I find, I think it looks fine. I think it looked absolutely fine. I'm sure if this gray looks great on my skin. So we'll see how I wear it and if I wear it, if I don't, I might just dye this. I just feel like it's a little bit too cool tone of a gray. Like it's giving a little bit too blue. I don't know. Nonetheless, great Monday top. <laughs> Lovely Monday top. From there, I think the last day is Wednesday. We'll see if we get to a Saturday, but this, I mean, this is either the Wednesday top or the Saturday top, I can't tell, but I think it makes more sense to be a Saturday top because it's quite scandalous. I've been knitting on it, I'm scared, I don't know. I This one was quite an ambitious one and I really wanted to, you know, got out of my comfort zone. I wanted to try something different, to try something that I hadn't seen a lot of designers do uh, with a cami. So this is how it looks like. Um, you will see a line right here because again, I blocked it upwards because I just wanted to make sure that the fit was gonna look good. Um, so just ignore that line. But it is just kind of like, a v-neck cami. I really liked, I wanted to have like really nice border here and a border around, I haven't clipped it in because I am unsure about the length at which I want this. I might also do, I was thinking of having two and folding it um, and like folding it into like a, sorry, a bow just so that you could have control or I get like those clasp things that you see in a lot of cami tops just so you have Again, the control over it. Um, we'll see how it goes, um, but I would try this on, but it is, uh, you'll just have to see it in <laughs> my vlogs, but it kind of has a V kind of shape here, and then the top goes like this and this. Um, I have added um, elastic along this edge just because I find that the V is a little too deep for my liking. I think when I, if or when I write the pattern, um, I'm going to make it so you knit it on smaller needles because I just knitted it, I just knitted it all like one needle. So it'll hopefully look like this. Someone, I showed this on the stream and someone said this would be beautiful as a dress. I also agree. I, <laughs> I don't think I would be able to, but I bought an extra skein because I was worried that I wasn't gonna have enough, but I'm still on the second skein. I feel like I'm gonna have just an extra skein, but this is how it looks. I don't know, we'll see. On it looks very nice, it's just very low, so I'm trying to find ways to make it look less low. Um, I might, I might have it so, like the triangle is not your full boob, so it actually is like above the boob if that makes sense. So it looks so, I don't know, but I'm I'm not too sure if that looks good or not. But I love the silhouette of this guy. I love how it came out. Um, I just, I just need a, there's just something about this V that needs to be worked on. And I'm not too sure what I could have done. We'll keep it going. I'll keep you updated. I'll have to let you know. But she's kind of my, like my most riskiest project, but with the highest kind of benefit. Cause I, I love how it's coming out. And um, it just needs a little bit of finessing for it to be perfect. Whew, oh my goodness. Okay, so that is it for kind of finished pieces or things that I've been working on that are more clothing related. I guess I'll show you guys more of the accessories that I have been making as well. So this is, these are just some cute bags that I was feeling like I wanted to crochet. I was in a weird little crochet moment. Love them. So good. Used up some acrylic. I think I held these in like a billion strands. So they're just really cute accessories that are adorable. And it has my little tag on here and it's so cute. And then from there, I'm still, um, I was in this weird crochet phase. I made this little crochet bag. Oh my gosh. Once I have a vacation that I need to go somewhere tropical, I will be using the bejesus out of this. It is so just cute and dainty, perfect shoulder bag. I cannot wait. I don't know where I will bring this to, but it's so cute. Like maybe in the summer I'll wear this and just like if I'm ever going picnicking of some sort, I can go and do that and look really cute. Yeah, we did a bunch of different like 
I think they're shell crochet stitches and yeah, I had a lot of fun with it. I forget how much fun I have crocheting pieces. Like I know we do a ton of knitting, but sometimes it's nice to have a in-between kind of crochet piece. Finished accessory, we got this brioche hat that I love. I'm planning to post this on the Patreon first, but it's just a really nice basic uh, brioche hat. I wanted to use this beautiful yarn. I used one strand of woolen vine. It's in Austria. Uh, I used one of their yarns and it was so lovely. It's so soft. It's so gorgeous. Sorry, I can't give you more details. I regret not buying more because they like I can't figure out how I can buy any of their yarn here, like online. I should have honestly bought more, but when I went in the store, I don't know, I just felt hesitant. Cause again, I was the only person in the store with my friend and I was like, oh my gosh, there's too many choices. And I didn't realize that they sold their own brand. Really like this, again, cobalt. I'm on my way to making the slipover, a cobalt slipover. I will, don't you worry. Also used one strand of a silk mohair just to give it its extra fluff. I do have leftover as well, so I have no idea. I've just been using it for like scrap projects and that has been fun. AKA this project. So I made a huge ass scrunchie and I love it to absolute death. It's one of the YOLO scrunchies that, um, or YOLO hair accessories I've been working on. Um, and yeah, I just tried like a bunch of different colors. I really like all the colors I chose. It just is like the most nicest scrunchie ever. I'm just gonna wear it like this the whole time now. It's so weird but I'll do it. Um, and then I made a smaller scrunchie. I love this color too. Like look at the green and the cream. Like it just looks so perfect. It's so small. You can make like a really nice headband ponytail with this. Ooh, can I wear this as a hairband? That looks insane. But I guess you could technically do that if you wanted to. And then also from the hair accessories, I made this like little bow. I haven't quite mastered styling it yet. Right now you could also kind of style it as a scarf, which is so funny, like a handkerchief kind of thing. Like, look at her. Oh my God, I might. Oh my God, should I bring this? Like, look at how cute. Oh, 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 okay. Okay, she's slay. <laughs> um, oh my gosh, I didn't even think I could wear it like this, but I mean, I could. Um, or like a headband or like wrap it around in like a bow. Or sorry, wait, I'm gonna see if I can do. Let's see if I could do this. Does this look funny? I guess like, I don't know. Just kind of look too. I don't hate it. <laughs> so I also have this. It is a part of the YOLO hair accessories pattern cowl that I, technically we are still doing, but alas, I am very bad with that. We know also bring these to Scandi because I want to look like a little cute Scandi girl in the streets. <laughs> I think that's oh my gosh I think that's about it I will also show this is the <laughs> I'm so scared to even keep going on to this so this is my frogged Sunday tea that I'm hoping to make into my own raglan tea I just didn't like the Sunday I don't know I think I I think I love it but I don't wear it and I loved knitting it and it was super fun don't get me wrong but I just would love to wear this top. And I think, I think me trying to make a raglan would really, I would really wear it. So this is kind of what it's been looking like. It's a little raggedy, but it's probably because I'm using the unraveled yarn. So what I did was I picked up one row with the needle and then I cut um, like one strand, like one row before it and then unraveled kind of upwards. And I'm hoping to knit upwards in a raglan um but this i don't know i've been seeing it's like kind of wonky looking so i'm a little hesitant to keep knitting this guy so it's kind of just been sitting in the back burner um but i would love to get it finished i should probably get myself to do it i just yeah your girl's hesitant like it's a really beautiful top and i'd love to get a piece out of this so i kind of want to start a tea collection kind of similar to like my top collection like the summer days i want to make tea pad like t-shirt patterns but have them all be named after different teas so either like maybe i'll call this one like if i can figure out how to do the raglan we'll call it like the earl gray tea um if i do kind of a tea with this guy maybe we'll do like orange pico or like lenten fog 
tea and just have like a lovely collection of teas. I think that would be like the funniest thing ever. And yeah, just having like fun with naming. I don't know. It's just like I am the worst at naming anything. So that's why I just call everything typical. It's just like fun to do kind of weird and different things. I guess just finally, like the last thing I've been really working on is I wanted to, again, revamp my cabled cropped vest and I want to make it like a series. I don't know. You guys know I love sets. I love series. I love anything that like has a theme to it. So I'm kind of wanting to do that, but with like a bunch of things. So instead I want to get, I want to make like I want to make a top, a sweater, a t-shirt, maybe like a v-neck, you know, just like everything. And the first one I've been kind of working up, it looks like this. I want to make a boat neck tank. Um, and so, yeah, it just has that basic cable, um, like panel, cable, panel. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping it'll look nice. I don't know. I want it to be quite like, so see how the neckline is quite long here. I'm hoping to make it quite, yeah, I don't know, boat necky. Uh, and just make this like a tank top and then make a slipover and just like have fun with it. I'm hoping to call this the croissant collection. I don't know, just, just cause like the twists give me croissant vibes. Um, and just like anytime I do kind of like a theme, so say if I do like, yeah, these panel cables will be the croissant one. If I do maybe like a lace pattern, we'll have it all like one thing. It's kind of it's similar to pop knits. She has like the euphoria top, the euphoria sweater, the euphoria, whatever. Like I want to do like, like petite knit with like the Sundays and like all that stuff. I want to start doing that for me and creating just like really cool designs. I don't know, we'll see. Probably thinking ahead of myself, but um, I can at least try. Talking about books, I did receive some books that I just would love to show you guys. I was kindly gifted some books from Penguin Random House. Thank you so much, Heather. It was National Craft Month in March, so I know I'm a little late. I thought I would just show you guys some of the ones that I chose. So I picked up two crochet books. I feel like I have a bunch of knitting dictionary books that I thought it would be really, um, I guess, like smart or like good for my learning to pick up some crochet ones. So they have this one, Stitch Dictionary. It's by Sarah Hazel. It has just a bunch of different kind of crochet patterns that you can work on. I find that I have no idea about any crochet designs that it, I just really wanted to pick up some, see what other people kind of were making. Like they all look so similar, but they all are different. So I really like that they give you steps and just how to do them. And they also give you the kind of patterned um, diagrams just so you can see them all perfectly. I also picked up a modern guide of granny squares. I really have been itching to make like a granny square shirt or something. I like, I know just like the basic granny square design. So I just thought it'd be really fun to pick up something different. Like they have just like the coolest like patterns and just things that you can try out. It gives you so much, so much direction, but it also gives you like really basic ones. So if you want to go check it out, I think it is just, if you, like if you're an avid um, granny square crochet and you want just something a little bit different or something fun. Uh, this was such a cool pick. They have so many, like they even have a watermelon. I don't know, I just really appreciate um, just dictionaries. I find I will, I will flip through them when I'm in like, wanting some inspiration. I guess to go with the kind of designing and like the knowledge base learning, I picked up the Knitter's Handy Book of Top Down Sweaters. I was curious just to see how other people or how people did different kind of top down techniques. And I found that this book was really nice because it gave very um, detailed uh, explanations as to how to make it for yourself. Um, and I really liked some of their designs. So I have no idea how to read this exactly though. It comes with so many charts. I'm trying to figure out because I think it gives like really specific details on like pattern design and stuff. But I just want to learn more. This one I specifically, I just want something, I want to figure out how to learn very nice drop down shoulder that's very tight or like maybe not overfit, maybe something that's slightly more tighter to the skin. I just, that was like a weird technique I wanted to learn. And I thought that this book was really good for that. It has raglan, it has color work. It just gives you a lot of um, explanation on how to do it in like multiple sizes, different gauges. Uh, and then gives you also examples of uh, their patterns as well. So 
I maybe don't love, <laughs> I don't love uh, the coil book, but nonetheless, I think it's a really good resource. So yeah, and I'm really excited to learn more. That's probably it for this video. I didn't, I, don't, I only really had one haul, but that really did not have a lot in it. It was more just replenishing yarns I already had so that I could finish pieces. I hope you guys enjoyed this yarn corner. I, I hope it gave you everything you needed from it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, or push the notification bell when you want to be notified next. You can catch me on Instagram, here, YouTube. We stream 1 p.m. PST Tuesdays, Thursdays. We have a Discord, so definitely go check that out. We have a Patreon, so that's where you can get early access to testing applications, as well as some free patterns, podcasts, and just updates from me that you might like behind the scenes stuff that you might not see everywhere else. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.